thank you for watching this video. Today I'm going to walk you through the Unity Matchmaker product. The first step is to integrate the Matchmaker within your project. You can integrate the Unity Matchmaker into your Unity project, Unreal project, or even a custom engine. With Unity we support an SDK, uh, an API, we do recommend the SDK for the quickest integration method. If you are on Unreal, an SDK is coming soon, however you can always use the API to implement your use cases through uh, a game service. Using a custom engine, you can always use the API in order to integrate your game logic. For this demo, I'm going to use Unity and the SDK method. The first step is to link your Unity project from within the engine. The steps are outlined here. Then you can install the Unity Matchmaker package through Package Manager inside Unity. Once we're done with this step, we can start by creating our first queue. A ticket is essentially a representation of the intent of a player to find a match. The first step is to create a queue. A queue is a way to group tickets together and ask the matchmaker to find a match for them. For this demo, I'm going to start with my first queue and I'm going to call it Deathmatch. The maximum number of players that can go on a ticket can be set here. For now, I'm going to set this to 2. Therefore, a player can also include another player in their intent to find a match. Now that the first queue is created, we can start with creating our default pool. Pools are a way to kind of subdivide queues within the matchmaker. We're going to talk a bit about pools in a minute. I'm going to choose a pool name for my default pool. I'm going to say default pool. The timeout here is the timeout that is set in order for tickets that could not find a match to be timed out. So here I'm going to say 60 seconds. If a ticket does not find a match in 60 seconds, it's going to time out. I'm going to select my multiplayer fleet and I'm going to select my build configuration. Next, we can start creating rules that define our matchmaking logic. For this, for this example, I'm going to go with a very simple match definition. I'm going to say deathmatch. And I'm going to pick the, the initial default region for uh, our servers. I'm going to go with US East. And for now, I'm going to say backfill is, is disabled. I can now start defining how my match looks like. We can always collapse everything here in order to see have everything that we have set up. I'm going to start with team definitions. For this game mode, we only have a single team, and I'm going to call it all. Since we only have a single team of this type, I'm going to put the min and max as one. Once that's done, now we can go on to player count. I'm going to say my minimum players in the match before we start a match is 50, and the maximum is 60. This way, we can only start a match if there are 50 players in the match. However, if I'd like, I can add relaxations. What a relaxation does is that it would replace my minimum count when the oldest ticket in the pool has been waiting for up to 30 seconds, and the replacement value is, gonna, is going to become 20. What this says is that the minimum value here would change from 50 to 20 when the oldest ticket in the pool has been waiting for more than 30 seconds. I can also add another relaxation that says, okay, well, I want to replace the minimum to 5 after 60 seconds. So now this translates into the minimum value that we have would change from 50 to 5 when the oldest ticket in the pool has been waiting for more than 60 seconds. Now that we're done with the player count, I can collapse this and get a better view. And I'm going to collapse the team count and get a better view of everything that we have set up. Now I can go to team rules and I can create rules that are specific for this type of team. Since we only have a single type of team here, the team rules can work the same way as match rules. However, the difference between team rules and match rules are that team rules only apply to this specific team type. However, match rules would apply to everyone 
setup in the match. Starting with the first rule in my team, I'm going to name this Skill Rule. This is just a friendly name for me so, so that when I can collapse all of the different rules, I can still see which rule this is. I can pick a rule type. We have multiple different supported rule types here. For this skill rule, I'm going to say Difference. And I'm going to say that the rule should pass. I don't want my rule to fail. So the source is going to be data in all players. And what this says is that when a player creates a ticket, they also submit some data in there. This data is completely custom and every developer can choose their own type of data to put in. Here, I'm going to say player skill. So in the ticket, when the player submits a ticket to the matchmaker, they would put extra data in there that says my skill is equal to 500, for example. So now my rule is a difference rule on the data in all players for the skill in all players. Since a rule is a difference rule, the reference data type can only be number. I'm going to say difference is 50. Now, what this rule translates to is that the skill difference of all the players in the team must be less than 50. We can add a relaxation to this rule and say, I'm going to disable this rule after 60 seconds, if the oldest ticket has been waiting there for 60 seconds. What this means is that I'm going to stop enforcing this rule if after 60 seconds we could not find a match. Another type of relaxation that we can do is we can replace the reference. So instead of 50, now I'm going to say, okay, my reference is, the, I can say something like 250. So this would relax the dif difference between skills between all the players if the oldest ticket in the pool has been waiting for 30 seconds. So this essentially would be the first relaxation to trigger before we disable this whole rule at 60 seconds. One other thing I wanted to mention is that we have multiple different age types. We have oldest, youngest, and average, and this would apply to the tickets in the pool. So if the oldest ticket in the pool has been waiting for 30 seconds, or youngest ticket in the pool, or the average age of all the tickets in the pool have been waiting for 30 seconds. Once we're happy with the configuration that we have, we can also go into the JSON display this would give us the translation from our logic builder to the JSON format. Some people find it easier to copy rules from here. For example, I can grab this reference control relaxation and duplicate it, then simply modify the seconds to be 10 seconds, and then the value could be 100. What this would translate to is that now I have three different relaxations. At 10 seconds, I'm going to relax the reference to 50, at 30 seconds, I'm going to relax it to 250. At 60 seconds, I'm going to disable the rule altogether. You can also add more rules, so we can copy this whole rule and duplicate it. You can do everything you want. If we go back to the logic builder, we also see that this new relaxation has been added here, and we can see it here as well. Once we're happy with all the configurations that we've done for this pool, we can click Create. Now that we have our default pool, we can also add, create additional pools. Any additional pool would require filters. The way pools work in the matchmaker is that there are extra subgrouping of tickets. You can think of this as segmentation or you can think of this as partitioning. For example, we can create an additional pool here. I'm going to call this my beta players. I'm going to set the timeout to 60 seconds and I'm going to set my same, I'm going to select the same fleet. However, I'm going to select a different configuration this time. This would mean that a different build would be set up for this, for players in this pool. Filters here are where I can say, well, I know that this pool is specifically for beta players. So tickets that are coming in would need to have a, an attribute that says build version and also say, my version is equal to beta.0.1. This is completely up to the developer. You can pick the different types of 
uh, operators, the different types of values. We currently support numbers and strings. Uh, we don't support the objects yet for filters. Once I'm happy with the filters I have, I'm gonna say next. And now I'm going to start building my configuration here as well. Now I quickly populated this match definition. I call this beta pool A so that we can also have another pool called beta pool B. The way we're gonna do this, I'm gonna explain in a minute. However, this could be useful if you'd like to do A-B testing and send some of your players to a certain pool and another to a different pool. This comes very handy when you want to have different rules added to each pool and, and test the effect of each of the different rules. For now, I'm going to click Create. And now we're done. We can now go to all the queues that we've set up. We only have one, which is Deathmatch. I'm going to click that. And then I can also look at the pools that we have set up. If you notice here, the default pool does not have any filters but then our beta players have a filter. This filter's only build version is equal to beta 01, which means that any player that has the attribute build version set to beta 01 would match into this pool. However, if a player does not match with this build version, they would fall back to the default pool. So the default pool can be described as a fallback pool that any tickets that do not match in any of the other pools would fall back here. Now I quickly created another pool here for demonstration purposes. The way these two pools work is this filter filters on beta version 0.2, this version, this pool filters on beta version 0.1. Now when players create tickets, the clients can randomly select between version beta 0.0.1 or beta 0.0.2. This would separate players going into two different pools and you can achieve A-B testing this way. Since we have two different pools, we can sort the different pools that we have. And what this means is that when a ticket comes in, we're going to test the filters for this pool first. And if it matches, the ticket goes there. If it doesn't match, we go to the next pool and the next one and the next one until we fall back to the default pool. Thank you for watching and have a great day.